Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin, a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man, due to my intense focus on ego and how it's impacting our lives, both humanly and spiritually. And I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego, Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. The title of today's show is Roles People Live the inattentive person. During the show, I'll be looking at people whose lower ego vulnerability energy is leading them towards living in the role of the inattentive person as they go about living their daily lives. A person who is often oblivious to what is going on within them and around them. A person whose attention is mainly held by that which allows them to experience arousal, excitement, and stimulation in the moment. A person who is easily distracted, often going from one idea or task to the next before completing anything. When the novelty or the enjoyment of an activity has worn off, they are done, even if the task isn't. Boredom comes easily to them, and they have a difficult time working through it. They do poorly with things that require planning, organizing, or discipline, as they often require effort in the face of boredom. This can apply to their relationships, in which others often experience them as disinterested, insensitive, or reckless, paying little attention to their needs if they fail to provide the inattentive person with excitement, pleasure, and even drama. There are plenty of people who live in the inattentive person role because there is no shortage of the supply of the lower ego vulnerability energy that serves to drive people who are living in this role. Today, I'm going to take you into the inattentive person's mind by sharing with you what ego is leading them towards thinking or not thinking, feeling or not feeling, and doing or not doing and exactly what's happening when a person is living in this role. All in the name of their survival, which is ego's ultimate and only purpose in our life, to be our survival energy, both daily and mortal. During this show, I'll be focusing on two main areas, ego's voice and spirit's voice. When I talk about ego's voice, I'm talking about the mixture of one's ego energy and one's mind. In the case of today's program, the mixture of the inattentive person's lower ego vulnerability energy and their mind. The place where their thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes, as well as values, are formed. A place that can be called the ego mind or ego space as I refer to it in my work and lays the foundation for their personality, difficulty recognizing their potential, and using it to accomplish what they are capable of in life. It's their lower ego vulnerability energy that's impacting the inattentive thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that the inattentive person forms and uses in their daily life, which becomes their ego voice. Ego doesn't form the thoughts the inattentive person is using because it can't think and has no awareness of itself or the energy that it is or the person whose mind it is infiltrating. 
the person living in the role of the inattentive person forms the thoughts while building on the ego energy at work in their mind. Ego just provides the fuel, the energy. When ego is impacting what's going on in the inattentive person's mind, they are listening to and speaking with ego's voice, not their own, but they often don't know it. Ego is in the foreground of their life, and they are in the background. Now, ego should be in the background of our life, and only present when truly needed, if our survival is being threatened. And so that's why tuning into our ego energy is one of the three contributors to ego medicine. We, and the inattentive person, need to know whose voice we are truly listening to and speaking with in our thoughts, words, and deeds as we go about living our daily lives. Is it ego's voice or is it our voice? We want to believe it's ours, but don't kid yourself, which is something that's easily done by many. We all need to get the real, truthful, honest, and potentially painful answer to that question. Is it ego's voice or mine? A question that most people fail to get the answer to because they don't know how to go about getting it. And that's what my work is about helping you to get that answer and doing something about it if necessary. In a way, finding out if you're living in a role you didn't realize you're living in, just as the inattentive person is, which is happening for many, whether they are a bully or an inattentive person or a cultist or any of the roles that I talk about in my programs on Roles People Live and in my book, The Two Voices Within. Another way of putting it, the bully often doesn't know they're being a bully. The inattentive person often doesn't know they're being an inattentive person. And the cultist often doesn't know that they're being a cultist because they're unaware of the ego energy operating in their mind and their life and living on a 24-7 basis. But they need to find out that answer so they can speak with their voice in their life and not egos, or they'll just spend their life surviving and never truly and fully living. After I get done talking about ego's voice and what the inattentive person needs to hear more from it during the second segment of our program, I'm going to be sharing in the third segment what the inattentive person is unable to hear from spirit due to being kept at a distance from spirit's voice by the ego energy at work and the distancing effect it has on hearing the voice of spirit. Even though the inattentive person has a spiritual core that we all have due to having the love, life, and energy God is within them, they are not spiritually well because they can't be spiritually well in their life due to what their ego energy is doing in it and to it. Their unhealthy, lower ego vulnerability energy is not allowing them to hear about and be the love, life, and energy God is within their thoughts, words, and deeds as they go to work with their talents and potential. Sadly, spirit's voice is something they may never hear and come to know unless they heal their ego energy. Sadly, the ego energy of the inattentive person is getting in the way of connecting to their divinity, of being their divinity in their daily life while working with their talents and potential. Sadly, this is something that happens to many people in their life whatever role they're living in. Many people die living in the role they had been living for 30, 40, or 50 years of their life. They never get better. Many inattentive persons never get better. They die never having really lived by failing to pay attention to what needs to be paid attention to, be it the people in their life 
or the life's work they must do. They spent all their time surviving within their inattentive thoughts, feelings, and behaviors towards the end of experiencing excitement, arousal, stimulation, and pleasure, while missing out on happiness. With those sobering thoughts, I'll get started looking deeply into the inattentive person by first giving you a brief description of the role of the inattentive person, a person you may or may not be acquainted with in your personal life, but is out there in society, if not in your home, so that we can be on the same page as to the role and the kind of person I'm talking about. The inattentive person has become oblivious to much of what is going on within and around them. They often have a difficult time noticing how what they are doing or not doing is having an effect on others. So they miss the linkage between who they are and how they are being and how it could be affecting other people. They have trouble being mindful of things that they have said or how they said it that may have affected others, particularly in difficult or harmful kinds of ways. There is often a reckless or careless quality to how they approach things. A lot of times they may speak before thinking. Some of the recklessness and carelessness that I'm referring to. The inattentive person is often surprised or doesn't believe that they have had any harmful or negative effect on others. It doesn't, it comes as a complete surprise that they actually have had some kind of uh, effect on another person that made things difficult for them. And by the way, this is not about their being defensive uh, or insecure. Uh, this is just about the nature of the inattentive person in that role. They're just oblivious and out of touch with what's really going on because of the issues they have in experiencing their healthy human vulnerability uh, that comes with living in a the energy of lower ego vulnerability. Their attention can only be held by that which is giving them pleasure. Pleasure, excitement, stimulation, arousal is a really important aspect of the person living in the role of the inattentive person. Uh, the inattentive person needs to be involved in things that offer them excitement or arousal or stimulation. And by the way, we all have an interest in that. That's not exclusive to the inattentive person. It's just the degree of it, the overemphasis on it that often gets in the way of other things that go on in life. For the inattentive person, things have to be fun in order for them to stay involved. They don't do well with activities that require working through some tedium. And a lot of things in life do involve that. They have to, they involve work before they come become play, before they become fun. They have trouble getting through the part of learning, which is work before getting to what becomes play. And this can apply in, in an academic context, but it also can be the case if there's a sport involved or perhaps developing an artistic skill. Uh, for example, learning how to play the piano. You know, playing scales is not a lot of fun or the whatever else is involved in laying a foundation for the more uh, advanced aspects of learning to play the piano. Uh, many people, who are inattentive persons would tend to just give up. Uh, for the inattentive person, it has to be fun from the very beginning and it has to stay fun for them to stay with it. The inattentive person lives in a world of distraction, going from one idea or task to the next before completing anything. They have trouble staying with things when the novelty or fun has worn off. The inattentive person has a history of starting things, 
but not finishing them because that's when the tedium or the boredom or maybe some of the work has set, it, set in that they have to contend with. And sometimes they blame it on the activity while failing to realize that the issue is really their, really their propensity to become bored. So it's really not so much the, inact, the activity creating boredom, but it, it's what's going on inside of them. When I taught in the university, I used to tell students at the very beginning of the semester that there really are three sources of boredom. And those include a boring instructor who isn't into what they're doing and what they're teaching. They don't have a passion for what it is they're doing. It can be boring content, uh, though in the context of my psychology courses, I tried to help people understand that there was always about relevance, something connecting them to the uh, their life, to what we were talking about. But also there's something called a boring student, a boring student. The quickest way to describe a boring student is somebody who's uh, uh, take, taking a class who lacks thirst, uh, who is just taking a class to get a grade and nothing more, and that they lack a thirst to keep learning uh, and growing their mind. That's a boring student. And I think a lot of students in schools are having that issue. When the novelty or enjoyment of an activity has worn off, they are done, even if the task isn't. And this leads to lots of quitting before the inattentive person has given things a chance to be fun or interesting. And they, again, start lots of things that they don't finish. Boredom comes very easily to the uh, inattentive person. They do poorly with things that require planning and organizing or discipline, as they require effort in the face of boredom. And this has something to do, I think, with their neurology, with two major areas of the brain involving the frontal lobes of the brain and what's known as the limbic system. And I'm not going to be able to go into those things right now, but that plays a role in a lot of the inattentiveness. It lays the foundation for uh, things that they may have trouble with. Uh, and this is why medications can often be used to enhance the functioning of the brain which deals with the planning, organizing, focusing, and the inhibiting of impulses that are necessary. By the way, we all get bored. The difference is that most of us fight through it because we have a neurology that's better equipped with lower levels of stimulation and when we do feel bored. The Difficulties of the inattentive person can apply to their relationships and with uh, which others are often experience them as disinterested, insensitive, or reckless, while paying little attention to the other person's needs if they do not provide them with excitement and pleasure. The inattentive person is difficult to be in a long-term relationship with, which is why they are often in lots of short-term relationships. They often want a change of scenery, whether it's work or where they're living and the people in their life. They have difficulty tolerating the downtime and the tedium that often takes place in a long-term committed relationship where things don't change much. They may also precipitate drama to experience the excitement of stimulation and arousal they want, but often uh, stresses the relationship. Marriage may not be a good idea, if ever, until they are into their 40s or beyond. I hope this provides you with some familiarity with people who are living in the role of the inattentive person and that you can use it as a frame of reference as we go further in today's show. We're coming up on our first break. When we return, I'll be looking at what the person living in the role of the inattentive person needs to hear and recognize from the voice of ego that's shaping the way they think, feel, and behave. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times.
Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid. Fix it to fix your life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. 19 brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self care and coping tips at coping 19.org. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at the voice of ego operating in the mind of the inattentive person. These are the kinds of thoughts rooted in lower ego vulnerability energy the inattentive person is using to survive in their life and serve as the foundation for the thinking feeling, and behaving they make use of as they go about their daily life. These are the kind of thoughts they must come to hear, recognize, and change if they are ever to become a better person, a whole person, and someone who can be their humanity and divinity. Ego's voice says, You have been led to only those thoughts, words, and deeds that can give you pleasure. Ignore or discard those that do not. Become mindless and emotionless and do not hear what you do not want to hear from yourself or others. Enjoy all that can bring you enjoyment. Here the inattentive person is teaching themselves with the help of their lower ego vulnerability energy that pleasure, excitement, and arousal, arousal are what matters most in life. That one's life should be focused on doing the kinds of things that can bring about this arousal, this stimulation, the pleasure, the excitement. Uh, that this is really what is most important in your life and that you are to think that. You are to believe that. And when I think about this particular thought, it makes me think about the doorway to using alcohol or drugs that can take place because a lot of usage of drugs is about experiencing some level of pleasure, at least temporary. To use your mind as a resource to connect to those experiences. So, Use it to create things that can bring about pleasure, excitement, or arousal. Uh, and, and that we all do use our minds to engage in things that can bring about, say, fantasies or so on. But this is uh, to a much greater degree in the mind of the uh, person with uh, living in the role of the inattentive person uh, to, in a way, become preoccupied or focus mainly on the kinds of things that can lead to one's excitement. 
and to not pay attention to or work with ideas that don't involve fun or excitement or arousal, such as being organized or disciplined, or to accept the notion that work is sometimes work and not always fun. Ego's voice says, be careless, reckless, or insensitive with your thoughts, words, and deeds, when this will give you pleasure. Place no judgment on them and allow no judgment from without, and you will be free to do all that you want. Hold high regard for yourself and do not become a witness to your mistakes. Do not learn from your errors, as this will interfere with your pleasure seeking. Here the inattentive person is teaching themselves with the help of their lower ego vulnerability energy that they don't have to be responsible if it interferes with their desires for fun, enjoyment, and pleasure. They don't have to be responsible. And this is what is going on inside the mind of the person with lower ego vulnerability who is living in the inattentive person role. Now, they may not be mindful or aware of it now, but this is something that if they are interested in getting to know, they can start to tune into. To use careless, reckless, or insensitive thoughts for their entertainment and amusement. So if the inattentive person is willing and does engage in these kinds of thoughts, if the objective is to make things fun and entertaining and amusing, that's a good thing in the mind of the uh, inattentive person. And again, this reminds me of the abnormal normal comments I've made. And a lot of us would think, well, that's not right. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that if our ego energy is in a healthy place, whether it's in power, flexibility, or vulnerability. But here we're looking at things that are connected to the abnormal normal and the ego stupidity, non-reality-based thinking that is going on inside the mind of the ego of, of the inattentive person using the ego energy, the lower ego vulnerability energy, filling their mind and leading to the construction and usage of these thoughts, even if one is not conscious of them. The inattentive person is not to question them because this would interfere with their pleasure. So don't, don't, um, don't, look at in a sober, serious way what you are saying or thinking and, and how it can be creating issues or difficulties for others due to their carelessness or recklessness or insensitive nature. That don't, don't bother with that is what is going on in the mind of the inattentive person. To enjoy the freedom of not having to be responsible for your thoughts words or deeds that there's a you know there's no boundaries there's no barriers if it's fun to say it or do it or think it do it and don't worry about the consequences particularly for those that may affect other people and so the inattentive person doesn't to always look up to yourself so that you will not see what you have done wrong which would interfere with your pleasure this idea that don't look up, up to yourself in a, in a positive, very uh, um, a way that, that just looks at what's right or good or about yourself, not noticing the mistakes. And, and I'm thinking about self-esteem and I'm thinking about people with inattentiveness often have high self-esteem. Unlike what sometimes people think the person with an attentive issues, the person with ADHD has lower self-esteem. No, they actually have higher self-esteem. Uh, they often overestimate their performances and how well they've done. Or they often think that people like and love them 
a lot more than they actually do. So people who are the inattentive person living in that role often elevate themselves, inflate themselves above others. And to avoid noticing one's mistakes from which to learn from them because the, this would get in the way of your pleasure. So who wants to look at yourself in a sober, clear-minded, honest uh, way that sees the things that need to be improved on, uh, the mistakes that one is making, that in the mind of the person with uh, lower ego vulnerability who's living in that role, stay away from that. Don't think about that. And they don't. So they don't do inventory on what they're doing in their life and who they're doing things to that may be difficult or harmful to them. Ego's voice says, leave what bores you for others to do and you will not be weakened. Boredom is an enemy that makes you feel weak, empty, and helpless, which you must avoid. Keep distance from your boredom and you will remain strong. Remain separate and above others who can live within boredom. Do not listen to others who would call you to do boring tasks as they can only make you weak. Here the inattentive person is teaching themselves with the aid of their lower ego vulnerability energy that feeling bored is unacceptable and that they must avoid it. To stay away, that that's not a, a good experience to be bored. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that we enjoy it so much as understand it and realize that sometimes things are boring that are important that we must take care of, that we must do in our lives, in including those that may involve working with and dealing with other people, including paying attention to them and be being willing to get to know them and not viewing that as some sort of boring thing because it doesn't fit in with my desires for attention, my desires for excitement, arousal, enjoyment uh, that may occur within this interaction that goes on with somebody. To let others deal with boredom if they so choose. So that, that's their problem if they want to deal with boredom and be bored. Uh, to look at boredom as unacceptable and to be rejected. So the inattentive person has a poor relationship with boredom. To look upon boredom as dangerous and something that can make one lifeless and endangers their survival. So getting these very negative thoughts about boredom and what it means in one's life. Very negative thoughts, uh, almost viewing boredom as toxic that it's harmful, that it's destructive. When in actuality and in reality, it's part of the human experience. Life is not always a three ring circus. To recognize that living is only something that can take place when one isn't bored. Think about that, that this misguided notion that one is only living when they're not bored. That when we're living, we're, we are not really living, we're just existing when we are bored. That's a misunderstanding of the nature of life and the challenges and demands that life brings to us. To resist or ignore those who would tell them, the inattentive person, that boredom is a part of life, something I just said, that all must contend with, that often fills in the spaces when things are more exciting and enjoyable which is really the nature of life, that there are things going on that uh, at times require more um, tedium, uh, detail. Uh, I think that's one of the things that people with inattention and people with, who are living in intent of rule, they don't like details uh, because details require work, uh, getting to understand things at a deeper level and sometimes going to that level or depth creates work, extra work. It's frustrating 
because it requires a lot of effort. Ego's voice says, do not let fear be an obstacle to your search for pleasure. Be fearless and all will be made available for your excitement and enjoyment. Do not listen to those who seek to awaken fear within you. They can only weaken you with their thoughts, words, and deeds intended to interfere with your pleasure. When desired, expose yourself or others to danger and fear to give you amusement and pleasure. This is fear's only purpose within your life. Here the inattentive person is teaching themselves with the help of their lower ego vulnerability energy to only experience fear on their terms, not life's terms. Fear meaning that if it can provide excitement, enjoyment, pleasure to the arousal, yes, use fear for that purpose. Either you're going to turn it on yourself or turn it on others. Rather than sometimes fear is a necessary part of life to help us uh, it, it, warning signals, red flags come up that let us know that something's not right. Something needs to be taken care of uh, in, in our life, whether it's involving ourselves or others. To avoid experiencing fear that would lead them to see their weaknesses and mistakes, something that fear does. It calls attention to them, but the inattentive person doesn't want to do that that the absence of fear will keep the door open to meeting your desires for pleasure and excitement. To ignore people who would call attention to their weaknesses and mistakes with fear. And you could also probably add guilt. To only use fear as a tool or a means to their excitement, entertainment and pleasure. Such as creating drama in a relationship, something that people with inattentive, living in that inattentive role often will do. To create drama, to feel emotion that they don't often feel under normal circumstances. And that fear is an emotional tool to only be used on their terms, not life's terms. We have reached the end of our focus on ego's voice. I hope this has given you greater insight as to the impact of lower ego vulnerability energy within the mind of the inattentive person. We're coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at what the person living in the role of the inattentive person is unable to hear from the voice of spirit due to the unhealthy, imbalanced ego energy that is at work. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, and I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in my, in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, 
spiritual and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now I'll be looking at what the voice of spirit is saying to the inattentive person that they are unable to hear due to the blockage being caused by their lower ego vulnerability energy and the distance from their divinity that results from the thoughts and messages contained within ego's voice that I shared with you earlier. Along with coming to recognize ego's voice using ego medicine, the inattentive person will need to hear the voice of spirit in order to fully heal and bring about the synergy, the merging, and the unification of their humanity and divinity. So now we'll take a look at Spirit's voice. Spirit's voice says, Your deafness to yourself and others is causing you great suffering. It has limited the boundaries of your life to what can give you pleasure, not happiness. You were made hidden from the gift of life as you seek far less than the meaning and purpose it can offer. Here, Spirit is saying that the inattentive person's inability to listen to and recognize what they are doing to themselves and others is bringing harm to all. The suffering that comes with failing to own and be responsible for what one is doing to themselves and others. That failure of responsibility, that failure of ownership is suffering. The suffering that comes with, with mistaking pleasure for happiness, failing to know the difference and the harm often being done. Again, this confusion often exists for people with who are living in the role of the inattentive person that pleasure is the same as happiness and they're not. The suffering that comes with coming to know life as a series of pleasure-filled experiences that are empty and meaningless. That that's suffering, being, being caught up and living in a life that emphasizes going from one pleasure to the next, failing to recognize that that isn't what life and happiness are meant to be. And it kind of makes me think that this is sort of like an addict getting their next fix of pleasure, whatever that form it will take for the inattentive person. Um, the suffering which can be ended uh, with, or the suffering that comes with coming to know life as a series of pleasure-filled experiences that are empty and meaningless. And again, suffering that involves a life that becomes filled with empty and meaningless experiences that are only about experiencing arousal, stimulation, pleasure. Again, sort of like an addiction going from one of these to the next is a lot of times the world, the role of the inattentive person. And this is suffering which can be ended with ego medicine, which can help to bring about an awareness uh, by the inattentive person of their life's greater purpose and meaning. Spirit's voice says, you have made learning, boredom, and failure into enemies, rejecting opportunities that grow beyond the boundaries of your earthly existence. This is a reflection of your suffering, a failure to listen to yourself and others cannot bring you freedom, only ignorance. It signals an ignorance of the divine truth within and surrounding you. Here, Spirit is saying that the inattentive person is rejecting growth in favor of their desires to experience excitement and pleasure. That they have made learning an enemy when it is not giving them pleasure. 
that again, learning is coming. It's an enemy that something they resist, fight against when it's not uh, conforming to their demands to feel pleasure within the learning that may be going on. They have made boredom into an enemy by rejecting it and failing to recognize that it's often a necessary part of the growth process. Uh, we all get bored, but as part of that boredom, we, 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 we work with what we're being uh, exposed to in terms of learning and uh, don't allow boredom to stand in the way of the necessary learning that often is required to take on meaningful things in our life. They have made failure into an enemy by their inability to use it as part of the growth process. Failure is a very important aspect of life that we all have to contend with due to our human imperfection. But the inattentive person has a difficult time dealing with failure because it often brings frustration and it's not fun. And so all of this leads to lots of neglect of their human and divine potential. The inattentive person is involved in a lot of neglect of all of the potential they have. And this is a neglect which can end with the use of ego medicine, which can remove the source of this neglect, lower ego vulnerability energy. Spirit's voice says, you must reach beneath the shallow depth of pleasure to know the greater meaning of your life, a meaning that offers great joy and happiness while freeing you from the search for your next pleasure. Your deafness has also distanced you from the gift of creating life, the ability to use your own thoughts, words, and deeds to create great wonders that transcend pleasure. Boredom, frustration, and failure call you to something within that is much greater. Do not reject them, as they are friends leading you to a greater meaning and purpose. You have the power to create this meaning and purpose with the earthly gifts you have been given. Here, Spirit is saying the inattentive person is meant for great things and happiness, which can never be realized if they are remaining consumed with getting pleasure alone. That pleasure-seeking, uh, looking for things that will only create enjoyment or stimulation or arousal will be an obstacle that cannot allow them to move forward and to go deeper, to uh, accomplish the meaningful things they are designed to accomplish in their life and to come to know what true happiness is. That they are neglecting the creation of their life within their preoccupation with getting things that give them excitement, arousal, and enjoyment. That when the inattentive person is overly focused on things that create fun and pleasure, that this undermines the creative process. A creative process that often involves boredom, that often involves tedium, that involves frustration and failure. That the inattentive person must come to view boredom, frustration, and failure in the light of their purpose to lead them into the use of their potential to accomplish greater things in life that involve their purpose and meaning. Uh, that these will bring us to come to know our purpose and to experience meaning in life more so than this overemphasis or preoccupation with 
doing things that are just fun and pleasurable and provide arousal. That the inattentive person can bring about the fulfillment of their purpose and meaning with what they have been given as they abandon a life focused on getting pleasure alone. A fulfillment that can be brought about with the use of ego medicine. Spirit's voice says, your obligation to others does not cease if you are deaf to their needs. Inattention does not nullify your thoughts, words, and deeds. You must own your moments of insensitivity, recklessness, and carelessness. You are greater than these behaviors as you are endowed with divine truth. The love God is within your being knows of your error. Allow it to lead you to own and move beyond your inattention and to who you truly are. Here, Spirit is saying the inattentive person was designed to do great things in their life with the human and divine gifts they possess. That the inattentive person is not free of the responsibilities and obligations they hold to others in the absence of their awareness of them. So just because you're not aware of uh, how you may have impacted others uh, doesn't mean you're not still responsible. That the inattentive person has brought harm to others within their insensitivity, recklessness, and carelessness for which they must take responsibility. That the inattentive person is capable of taking this ownership because the love, life, and energy God is dwells within them, that they are much, much more able to assume what must be dealt with in terms of ownership and responsibility because of the divine truth of their love, life, and energy that God is that is within them. This is an ownership that will be made possible with the use of ego medicine to heal the lower ego vulnerability energy that is blocking this from happening. We have reached the end of our focus on Spirit's voice for this show. I hope that what I've shared with you will allow those needing to do so to hear the voices of ego and spirit that must be heard so that they can truly speak with more of their voice in their life and not egos and get on with the business of truly and authentically living and not just surviving or existing. I want to mention that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. You can also purchase Focused Ego Meditations on the shop page of my website, egoandspirit.info, which can help you to know when you are truly speaking with your voice in your life and not egos as you go about healing your ego energy where needed in its power, flexibility, or vulnerability. Please feel free to email me with comments for this or any of my shows at spiritualawakening777 at comcast.net but please do not leave any attachments as I will be unable to open them for security reasons. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine by growing your awareness of its symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and shine through you and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. 
the spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual. You already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life, humanly and spiritually. Thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye for now.